hello welcome back to my channel today we are going to be talking all about the books that i want to read in july so what is up hello hi how are you doing um great glad to hear it i'm swell i just put on my summer ween halloween nails i'm like living my best life i'm so excited and uh yeah i just i'm i'm really excited for july i've decided to really slim down my tbr to leave room for a lot of mood reading because let's be real that's pretty much what i do and i think i'm gonna try to keep doing these slim down tbrs going forward because i mean guys <laughs> June's TBR is embarrassing. I might take it down. We can't look at it anymore. But before we get into this new uh, slim version of my TBR, we need to talk about the beautiful, wonderful, amazing, majestical, magical, mesmerizing. <laughs> sponsor of this video which is book of the month so y'all already know i'm really into book of the month i absolutely adore them they are my favorite book subscription box service they're just wonderful beautiful people all around 10 out of 10 i do recommend genuinely i've been using them years before i ever partnered with them so if you don't know book of the month is a monthly subscription box service where they sort through thousands and thousands of different books every single month and bring you a catered five that you get to choose from you of course get your add-ons if you would like to pay a little more get a little more but the five that they pick are typically really good they encompass a bunch of genres which I always lean towards the thriller because I mean no one's surprised that's my favorite that they usually bring to the table they do have some historical romance fantasy all of it they really do bring a lot of different genres and each month you get to pick the one that you would like delivered to your door and then it's on its way to you i really like this because it helps you to spend more time reading and exploring new books versus looking through hundreds and hundreds of goodreads lists like i have done and i'm not totally bitter about in the years looking for another read after the one i like there is no penalty if you want to skip a month if you're not feeling any of the books and like I said if you're like really feeling the books and you like the add-ons as well that's always an option too so you really can go either way judging by the shelves that I show on my Instagram a lot that are in my living room I tend to go the way of adding on books every month because there's always great thrillers that I am just excited about they bring early releases they bring brand new releases sometimes you can get books up to like almost a couple weeks in advance and I just think that that's the coolest thing it makes me really excited to get to them so yeah if you are interested if you would like to try out book of the month use my code olivia i know i have my own code now like oh who am i a, a book of the month oh, rep or oh, whatever i guess i'm a rep i don't know anyways <laughs> use it down below it's in the description as always click on the link use the code get your first box for $9.99 and try out this amazing amazing subscription service so without further ado let's get into this tbr how about we do that so the first three books are actually for patreon book clubs so the first one is the diviners that is going to be our book club pick for the month i am of of course obviously excited for this favorite book of all time it's my birthday month listen we celebrating this birthday on Tuesday but really we're celebrating it all month long with reading some of my favorites I can't wait to tell you about the one that we're reading for Phantasma book club like oh Oh, the diviners let's let's give her the space she deserves so the diviners is about a group of kids that all have something in common and that is a supernatural or a different kind of power that they can tap into the main character of this specific novel it kind of shifts between the books in the series is evie o'neill evie o'neill is a wild child she gets sent to new york to kind of deal with the fact that she's partying which since this is in the 1920s and prohibitions like all out there i don't really know why they thought sending her into new york city in the roaring 20s was going to help her with her partying ways other than help her get better at it like i don't the logic there was lacking for me but whatever do what you gotta do i guess but she goes out there and she's with her uncle who is this guy who's in charge of this museum called the creepy crawlies and it's just an occult paranormal museum i think it sounds fantastic i'd love to go and while there she discovers that maybe she's not the only one with the superpower 
superpower. I don't really know what else to call it. She is able to touch objects and get someone's deepest, darkest secrets while touching that object if they were the ones that owned it. And this is put to use because there is a demonic serial killer on the loose. And I literally mean like it's a demon serial killer. A serial killer who's a demon. A demon who is a serial killer. Just running rampant in New York City and so they are on the case trying to help solve it and there's a bunch of other plot lines that are going and then finally at the end of the book they all come together and you see how everyone is kind of entwined oh it's just so good so freaking good and then next up we are going to be reading the raven boys for the next four months we're going to be having a raven cycle read along on my patreon discord i am so excited this is one of my favorite series i just love the atmosphere and the group of friends it's just so great if you've never heard of this book we follow a girl named blue and she lives in a house full of witches which sounds amazing doesn't it and one of these witches lets her know that she has something in the future coming towards her where if she kisses her true love or the like her soulmate kind of person she will kill them by doing that and listen the drama of it all she doesn't know who it is she doesn't know if it's true if it'll actually happen all of this and then we have the boys from the all boys school I can never remember what it is called. Right now I'm thinking of Ellingham Academy, but that's truly devious, so that's not right. There is a group of boys, Ronan, Adam, Gansey, and Noah, and they all meet Blue, where Blue is working at a restaurant, and they kind of just go on this quest to find a Welsh king, as you do normally in the summertime. And this book is just so beautiful. It has one of the things that I love the most, which is a magical forest that you don't really know if it's like a forest that's on your side or not. I kind of like that. It's almost like the forest in and of itself is a character. I just, ugh, it's so, it's so good. And the writing style is just amazing. It's just a great time. I really do recommend this series and I'm very excited to get to do a, another reread of it. And then for the Phantasma book club, which I host with Mel on both of our Patreons and Discord, we're going to be reading. <laughs> Oh my god. The Priory of the Orange Tree, y'all already know. I'm obsessed with this book. It's my favorite epic fantasy of all time. It does have dragons. It has sapphic rub. It has drama. It has espionage. It has all of it. It is, oh, it is so good. And yet, I struggle to really describe to you what it's about. But at the very basis, <laughs> it is about two sides. One that I believe worships dragons, the other one that believes them to be evil and they kind of are going against each other and then that's where I pretty much blank because here's the thing. I love epic and high fantasy. I think it's a great time. It's a fun time. It is a swell time even. There's this TikTok sound that's going around where you know, it's like you do something and then it says, am I? better than everyone. But then someone made a news sound when one of the book talks that I saw, one of the very few, I don't really get a lot on my For You page, but it said every time I read the first sentence of an epic fantasy and it just said, am I dumb? <laughs> Which is exactly how I feel. Like once I get into it, I'm having a good time. I know rereading this is going to be great because I've already read it for one time. So I've kind of already processed a lot of the fine, now, well not the fine, the broad details. Now I can go into the fine details, which I'm very excited to do. Very slow burn romance. Very, very much a fan of that. Um, yeah, I'm not a good seller of this book other than I cried while reading it. I tear up thinking of it. I just love it a lot. But uh, no, no, I, I could not concisely tell you the plot. I couldn't. I'm one with that. Next up, I'm going to be reading the new thriller from my boy Riley Sager, and that is Survive the Night. I'm so excited because I found a independent bookstore that is a couple hours away, so I can't go pick it up. But it's getting shipped to me. It is a signed, personalized copy from him. It's so exciting. Like, I can't wait to have it in my hands and to show it to you guys like I mm. but this one is I, I just know that it takes place in a car like they're driving home from college where I think there's like a string of killings I'm not sure I don't want to be corrected by the by like because I, I don't want to know going in I want to just read it because it gives me the same feeling that no exit by Taylor Adams gave me and that one was wild and I'm so glad that I didn't know a lot going into that book because it was so fun to figure it out as I was reading 
So that's what I want to do with this one, but I just wanted to point it like that I'm gonna read it this month because I'm so excited. I have loved every single Riley Sager book. There's not a bad one. Home Before Dark is my favorite, but I think also he just gets better in publication order. So I'm excited for this one because it's his latest one and it's only gonna be amazing. And because I am consistent, if nothing else, and in this I am consistent and still reading this book because I have yet to finish it, that is Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson. Yeah, I'm like 300 pages into it. Yeah. Yeah, I should be done with it by now, but nope, I'm surely not. These books take me so long to read. I love them. I think that they're beautifully written. The story unfolds so perfectly. Like, it is just a phenomenal book series. But man, it takes it out of me to finish this thing. It really does. I don't know why I'm struggling. I think it's just back to that book talk of like, am I dumb? Because it's just a lot to take in and I need to just sit down and like really focus. But uh, I don't know if you can tell. I don't exactly have the energy of someone who can just sit down and really focus on things. So we're struggling, but we're going to keep struggling through the July because again, a consistent queen. Uh, and then next I'm going to put up Gator Bay which is part of the Jana De Leon Misfortune series. It's a cozy mystery series I've been reading. It's about a woman who is a spy for the government and she was working overseas and she ended up getting a bounty put on her head because she did something she most definitely shouldn't do. And so now this like international villain is after her. So she gets put in witness protection program. I mean, it's like witness protection program on steroids, but you get the drift. And it's down in this place called Sinful, Louisiana, which that is the most Southern and true town name I've ever heard. I really would struggle to not believe that this town is completely real and based off of a true story but it's every week because <laughs> every book is published like every six months or so every week there tends to be a murder because each book takes a week after the next one if that makes sense so week one is book two week two nope week one is book one week two is book two so on and so forth so people are getting killed weekly at this point and honestly like that's stressful but it's her and these two older women that live there that are teaming up to just figure it out solve the crimes it's fantastic it is hilarious it is so fun i just love these so i have the is this the fourth or the fifth one up here and um i don't know how many of these i'll read this month but it's up here I think I read three last month. I was just great. So hoping to average that so I can get to the Halloween editions by October because they look so fun. Then I have Under the Whispering Door. This is a, I don't really know what this classifies as genre wise, but we have our main character who is a cutthroat lawyer and he ends up dying. And through this, he meets not really the Grim Reaper, but the person that's responsible for helping him, I suppose, cross over to the other side, whatever that may be. And I do believe they fall in love at some point. Honestly, y'all, this just sounds so cute. I just love love. And for whatever reason, I'm in the mood to read romances, but this has kind of like a paranormal fantastical twist to it. I do believe it's set in our world from the little bit that I have read thus far. So that's good because I need to, I need some grounding, <laughs> but I still want some fantastical elements, which to me, ghosts are fantastical. And then the last three are going to be some romance. One is a review copy I want to get to, and it is It Happened One Summer. This is by Tessa Bailey. I've heard a lot. Is she the one that wrote Fixer Up? the clown. I've heard a lot about that book and absolutely none of it has been good so I won't read it. Got it. I know that Chandler loved Tools of Engagement I think so I'm looking at that one. I may read that one but listen clowns freak me out despite the fact that I do love it which is why I love it. I don't need them in my romance. I surely don't. It, there's just a lot to unpack with that I feel. This one is a I'm kind of assuming a social media influencer kind of person like a Paris Hilton but of this day gets sent to a small town because she got put in jail for a night I guess and she meets this like super grumpy grumpster boat dude. This is what I get from the reviews and from the description on Amazon so I don't know if that's completely what it is but even if that's just the bare bones it sounds fun so I'm excited to read it. Then I have two more. One is Beach Read. I know that this is where two authors go 
to like a writing retreat and then swap genres so that sounds fun and the other one is people you meet on vacation i don't know anything about this other than both mel and jaleesa have been like freaking out about it and i trust them and here's the thing that really sealed the deal and put this on the old tbr i tell you what mel told me that the guy is described as chris evans and or well we had a whole conversation about how if we don't like how the guy is described we just like override it with a celebrity typically mine's sebastian stan hers is chris evans you know details but uh yeah that's what made me put it on my tbr because hello what do i look like not doing that so yeah that is my slim down tbr for july will i get to them all probably not it's more realistic though because there's only 10 and a lot of them are fairly short books so we'll see we'll see how it goes um stay tuned for that but thank you so much to book of the month for sponsoring this video if you're interested in getting your first box for only $9.99 use my code that's on the screen the description down below all that good stuff and the emoji of the day is going to be fall leaves because i don't care what they say I'm in love with you. They try to turn me away. This is me singing to fall time. I know it's July, but it's my birth month. So first of all, give me a freaking break. Second of all, if y'all can have Christmas in July, please. Uh, stores are already putting out Halloween decorations. It's Halloween in July. It's Halloween till I die. I'm a poet and I didn't know it. Anyways, emoji of the day is fall leaves because I love myself and I love you and you should love yourself too. So we should practice self-care and pretend that it's fall time right now. Um, I am wearing a sweater. Granted, that's because my floorboards had to get ripped up. So we have huge mega fans going all day and it's really cold in my freaking house. But still, we're pretending it's fall. If I could get a pumpkin spice latte, I sure, oh my God. <laughs> God just trying to intervene, but you can't bring me down now, man. I surely would. I would surely get a pumpkin spice, but I can't. Starbucks is still gatekeeping the PSL, but we'll get there eventually. This is done. I'm so glad that people like tend to click off this video <laughs> before you get to this part. Anyways, if you got to this part, just comment PSL. Let's confuse the people that didn't make it this far. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful morning, afternoon, or night, wherever you are. I will catch you in the comments down below and in my next video. Bye guys.